Because, yeah, I guess, again, I guess Make It Rain is just literally throwing coins. Mm-hmm. Wasn't Tinkaton better? I want to like Tinkaton. Good old Tinkaton. I... But it's so bad. And and that's when you'll get the reply. It's like you really won't like a Zashin too. It didn't have to be a Zashin too. It could have been closer to like Mimikyu, who in terms of its stats. Mimikyu's stats are honestly fine. The fucking problem with that asshole is disguise. What's my problem with Mimic Hue is that it has the It was Shill Dust. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Mini winked through later because I kept missing the. Huh. It was Shill Dust. <laughs> and to answer the one dumb thing, the fucking bear take is Snow Club. That's why I missed. Huh. Yeah, Snow Club has another ability. Yes. I, like. See, Titan is thick fat, Weave Out is pressure, and Altaria is natural cure. And the funny thing, and I'm just being a petty <laughs> asshole about this because of Agita, uh, the Altaria being natural cure, that, that ability doesn't do anything. Oh, you have to swap to get natural cure to work. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Not actually say it rhyme because that one technically took the most work only because of it being a double battle. It was Snow Cloak the Dick. Uh, did... I guess again, I'll say. Uh... Your what? Okay. I really don't know who the hell I like the most out of. <laughs> well, honestly, he and I hate all of these people. Uh, I guess Larry. Everyone loves Larry. I said, I gotta live like Larry. Okay, I don't uh, hate all of them. I only hate the electric one. Everyone else, I think, is painfully mid. <laughs> Just like this game! Oh! Uh, though, like, <sighs> so then, again, let's be honest, you can't, like, let's be honest, you can't live up to the, you know, previous game of having Nessa be Melody and... Mallow was the grass gym leader, right? Mallow. Yeah. You, you can't live up to having, like, uh, the game with all four of these assholes. One week later. And everyone is just obsessed. Like, <laughs> for, you know, sword and... Shield, when some people hate the game, those gym leaders are, like, universally loved. Like I said, it's like, you're, uh, you, uh, came, like, after the game. D was... has no she was on and has that squishy foot sound. Well, and also, not just B, we then have the, like, one, uh, the character that's set up as your rival. I can't remember the name of Marty. No, Marty. Her name's kind of weird. You then have her and... Isn't the one guy supposed to be her brother? Yes, that's yeah. her brother. It's Pierce. And again, you have those uh, uh, two, so it's like... Like, gonna uh, be honest, uh, you could probably make an argument that Sword and Shield low-key has the best set of gym leaders. Where are you supposed to... Entrance. Okay. Mm. You also have Oath Hall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which every, which everyone seems to only like Opal because of the whole questionnaire. Because like when she asks the age and you reply the like sixteen or whatever, she's like, "Aren't you hilarious?" Where are you going? I forgot I had to talk to them. We're hosting a tournament. <laughs> well, bye. 
<laughs> everyone loves Opal. Okay, technically, other than Gordy, everyone universally loves like every other gym leader is, I think, at least liked on some level. People are obsessed with v not her. Her. Gengar staring no. into your soul. That's what a Gengar does. Though well, I also kind of feel like people only... All those books are obviously low-quality pixel texture. <laughs> Shh. Everyone does that. Most crowd shots and scenes are just... But when Pokemon does, it improves Game Freak as Most well. crowd shots in movies are just uh, very far away shots of cute hips. No, I'm serious. That's how a lot of movies would create a large crowd shot is because a Q-tip kind of vaguely looks like a human head. It is far yeah. enough away where you... Yeah, and the Dipping Dots company was saved by the fake meat industry. True. I love dumb facts like that. Yeah. What? Yes, especially because a lot of facts like that come in... Especially because a lot of facts like uh, that are commonly, like, sort of clickbaited in how they are. Turn them that. Good night. Like how uh, a lot of uh, people state the Pepsi has, like, a fleet of Russian warships when that's technically not no, entirely they did. true. They now, a lot of people act like it is a battle-ready fleet. All of the shit they were given was decommissioned, so none of it ever technically worked. A lot of people act like fucking Pepsi is just going to sell up with, like, a Russian war well, fleet. Well, the other thing is that they're... God damn it. It was... Fuck, I can't talk. Hmm. They needed money, so Russia gave them the ships because Pepsi scrapped the ships yes. because they were not... Battle the, the, the clickbait part is people act like it's an active fleet when that's never what it was. It was always they were turning them into scrap metal. Well, you have to say the full story. They yeah. offered them battleships one time. Yes. Because the way... The... The way... God, I can't show your face into it because this is just like... So... Like... Russian... Before Russia was a slightly more open country, they had an exclusive deal where Pepsi was the sole soda allowed from, like, America. And Coke wasn't allowed in, like, the USSR. But what the USSR would pay... Pepsi with was not money. Mm. It was vodka. Yes. And then when there was an alcohol ban, they couldn't pay in vodka, so they paid in decommissioned submarines. <laughs> they paid in decommissioned Navy vessels. The fattest ass. I believe the first tournament was rigged, so you should fight the exact same people I did. So... Should uh, be Arvin the one signed his thing. I can't remember the other one and Gino. Fighting lady. Oh yeah. I keep jokingly calling her the fighting gym leader. It's basic, uh, like that's basically what she is because we never ended up uh, like doing it. But one of the uh, teachers at the uh, school is uh, Ryan's sister, and her sister apparently used to be a rock gym leader. And that's just like an interesting connection thing you can uh, make, but I don't remember who it was. God damn it. Just grab a cord. Though the one character being Rhyme's sister is actually kind of obvious because her name, like, 
her name rhymes was well rhyme. I think it's that teacher. Her name starts with a T H. It's time. Yeah. It's time. Yes. She was apparently a rock gym leader, and it's like you know, it's one of those. They didn't need to include that. So because of that, it wouldn't surprise me if, even if it's only in the anime, if something says that, like, the fighting, if the one, like, fighting teacher actually is a gym leader is, well, especially because that would, at least in English, kind of create a fun pun if they're called gyms and, like, she's basically the PE teacher. Yes. And for our next class, you have to let my Machamp punch you in the... <laughs> God, without vomiting out your bones. <laughs> mm. Can I believe that was the teacher that said she was... She had the Metacham, and I believe she said she was obsessed with letting it kick her. It's like, what, what the fuck are you on, woman? <laughs> <laughs> she likes being stepped on. You see, it's funny, because <laughs> Metacham gets high jump kicked. I believe it also gets that new... Big puffer. I believe it also gets that new move in this generation, the, like, axe kick, which yes. is... Which is just, like, a worse high jump kick, and I'm like, why do you keep making moves like this? That one can be justified, because that move is lower power than high jump kick, but it had, like, a ridiculous... It's like a 30 or 40% like, paralysis rate or something. It's got an like, um, absurd secondary effect. But I feel like jump kick basically fills the same role minus the like paralysis chance no because it's like jump kick is still like two rungs lower so for like 10 power points difference from high jump kick with the same accuracy you get like 30 percent paralysis or whatever the fuck that does i oh i'm oh i'm still yeah so... junk So yeah, it is the same. It is the rigged story tournament. Though I also realizing that it was like uh, a junk. Uh, here it would be you're fighting all the teachers and then Gita, so that makes sense. Especially because, isn't Jock, what, what teacher was he supposed to... He's your homeroom teacher. Yeah. Well, that is actually your... Because I was trying to think of, like, the polygon he uh, had were themed around uh, that, because they, like... There we go. Because, like, there's a... I can't remember, did it protect against you or- yes. Oh wait, yeah, because we made the joke, what is this, a ROM hack? Okay, yeah, it's 120 power, um, hold on. 30%. Oh no, that's what it did, it's a 30% confusion chance. Mm. And a lot of people make fun of that move, but I will be that guy for the slight loss in power. I think it's because that, other than, I think, like, Manicham, that that's one of those weird moves where it's a fighting move that most of the things that get it are not fighting type. Because low kicks is, like, one of the only other things that There get... are three Pokemon that get this move. It's like low it kicks Manicham, and I do not remember the other one. Think about legs. I can't. I, uh, right now, I don't really can't think of anything. I don't rem remember. Pursuing Lilligant. That was it. Yeah. The Pokemon. 
Because regular Lilligant has no legs. Hisuian Lilligant has all of the legs. Because regular Lilligant was designed to look like a poofy grass. Also, I believe because it's a grass type, it's also designed to look like this one type of flower. Closing that. So the first tournament was rigged. Yeah. That, that makes sense, though. Because it's the tournament you have to do to unlock crap. It's Free Wrath! Everyone's favorite Pokemon. Boo. Boo. I like mine. It's, no, no, I it's everyone's favorite long horse. Though I feel... Furigraph is one of those things I just had this feeling in the back of my head that either through shit that will come in through transfer or other things that is just going to be deemed, like, deemed out class and irrelevant when the DLC uh, happens because of... There's some... actually almost a universal effect the other way. Armor Tail is just too good at stopping priority where it is enough of a bonus because... because... We, we do have the whole, like, Grassy Glide is probably going to come back. Uh, Grassy Glide is coming back. Wasn't but, it the thing that showed Grassy Glide was actually like one of the screenshots on the website or something? No. No, no, Well, yeah, I think one thing, but like, no, damn it. A guy at Famitsu got to do a demo of the DLC and do a, and they allowed a small write-up in the Famitsu magazine mm -hmm for the demo, since it doesn't reveal too much, and one thing he said in the TM crafting was Grassy Glide. Hmm. But also, bringing it back as a TM and not a move tutor kind of scares me, because that makes me wonder if, like, even more shit is going to get it. This is the first time we're talking about she's basically the fighting gym leader. Because, like I said, she's the PE teacher, so... Mm. Yeah. It's Tora, the fire version. The, the, like, beside you know certain things that are basically <laughs> like very fast and powerful and shit. Part of the other reason I feel like Ferragraph might be outclassed is not just a like they bring back the things that can outspeed and like one shot and kill it, but also because we're getting you know like Dusclops and shit back. So. Fucking Evia like Dusclops and some other fan asses are going to be coming back, and I feel like it's one of those because they would just be objectively fatter that they're deemed a like replace. I mean, it was the only thing for a graph having at that point is stopping priority, especially if Rillaboom does actually get Grassy Glide back. Even if it's not Rillaboom, is a Grassy Glide. If Grassy Glide is given to like the Tumbleweed or certain other things, that move yeah. could that move could potentially be disgusting. Frigorath, off the sheer ability of stopping priority, has continued to exist in a usage rate that no one actually thought it would be used in. It defied all expectations because people realized stopping priority is kind of good. And the idea is very specific Pokemon get absolutely, you know, hard capped by stopping priority, but that is enough of a bonus because you stop all the random, like... I sit, I sit there and think about if Rillaboom does a comeback, the dumb, like, the dumb shit it could do. Or again, not just real but with other things that didn't have. Oh, fun. What? Didn't comment on that in my game. What? What she said before translating that thing. What? Push past your limits day by day, and then she said Osu. We've been over this. She <laughs> does the those martial arts breathing things. Yes. When like just in general. Yeah, punk. When like. <laughs> When you first meet her in the yeah. game, and I noticed that in the text box, I pointed that out as, like... She's, she's still the... doing it, is my point. She's the fighting game. Yeah. 
See, I was, I'm gonna call her the fighting gym leader. There is no fighting gym in this game. There was the fighting team star base, but that hunk of woman. Yeah. I, I forget that character's name, but I do yeah. love that character. Especially because the whole thing about the team star, they were all kids that got bullied. Yeah, I'm sorry. How does how does someone bully her? How do you bully this brick house? And if someone says, oh, that happened later, what about the flashbacks? <laughs> okay, I know the flashbacks, one, I believe those are supposed to only be like a year. Or it two, was a year. Or two ago. And two, it's also one of those, you know, we ain't gonna be making models for just uh, flashbacks. But again, it's like, look at, you know, how fucking like, tall... Uh, she is and you know why because well fighting woman it's Gita top champion Gita again she doesn't have any fairy types does she no oh, even if she did I could just swap and then make it rain she doesn't have any fairy types okay I'm good could spam uh, dragons like this is gen 5 OU only slightly problematic thing is King Gambit, maybe? But it would be Sucker Punch, and I'm not super effectively beaten by Sucker Punch, so we all know that does dick amounts of damage. Still? Oh, oh, straight Tabalog. That's actually fascinating. Why? Ice uh, or Dragon? Ah. Uh, but. Avalog has got off all special defense. King Gambit might show up next. Oh, no. Go, go. Because I've been spamming Dragon, I honestly would have thought King Gambit would have happened sooner because of it resisting Dragon. Oh, no. This is actually going to create a semi-scary... King Gambit thing. Which That's... is fucking hilarious because everyone complains that she always sends King Gambit out in like the middle of the battle. When yeah, she only has three Pokemon left. Yeah. It's gonna be the next to last. It's, it's hilarious because I've seen so many people say she always sends the King Gambit out almost immediately. Yet yep. th this one she actually saved it until the end. Near the end. So it actually has the 30% boost on Supreme Overlord, so it, it basically has a life orb now. Now do you Sucker Punch? You didn't even Sucker Punch. Does hers even know Sucker Punch? Wait, I believe that's a breeding move, so no. I don't think that's a breeding move. Puh. I feel like it's an egg move because I feel like I pointed out, you know, it's one of those if she had, like, Eevee training and shit and was, like, quote-unquote smarter, you would end up with the King Gambit either at the end or being her last of Hogan to get, like, a 40% boost and then you just hide behind Soccer Punch. Because even... Uh -huh. I'll have my answer in a minute. Because I don't always remember off the top of my head. And unnecessary crit. It is funny to actually watch her save. Hey, if that is, you never know. Okay, no, it was actually a breeding move. Okay. I couldn't. Like I said, I never... it, had, it had been a minute, I couldn't remember. You see, I. As well as I remember Pokemon, I often forget. The only reason I remember that is because of everyone complaining about how terrible of a champion Gita is. That was one of those times where we were, or like, if she had, like, competitive training and, and shit, and even if the Glamora ha still had to be her last, like, Pokemon, 
King Gambit before that point, it's like having a 40 like percent boost from Supreme Overlord and then potentially a life orb or another item and you just hide behind Sucker Punch to patch up that <laughs> thing's speed problem. That uh, thing could actually become a really obnoxious asshole. Or, again, if you actually swapped the two around and King Gambit was her ace, her terrestrialing it into a pure dark type and hiding behind Sucker Punch, because at that point, that would be a 50% boost. So that would basically be a free choice ban. And, again, you then just throw a life orb on top of it. You could maximize the damage if you're going with hold items, and you could do a life orb if you wanted to. Mm. Or if you wanted to do... Something that might give the King Gambit more survive more survivability, you do a set similar to mine, where you basically have like no speed or minimum speed, and you have mostly HP and attack with an assault vest. Yeah. To patch up your kind of middling special defense. Because yeah. King Gambit with an assault vest is actually quite tanky. And if you terrestrial into pure or dark because you're no longer four times weak to fighting, you're actually, you know, like, King Gamma is kind of heavy, but at that point, low kick, it can actually live certain low kicks. Yeah. Because, like I said, while kind of heavy, it's still just the single target, I think, was out. The funny thing is King Gambit's Wayne, I think it was out the four times weakness. It's actually the, like, 80 power low kick. I think it was, like, the mid-range one. Which is, you know, still, like... Still use... It's one of those... It's, like, still useful, but... Again, you could actually live. And not just low kick. Other fighting moves at that point, especially if you are a fat one with a lot of H. The P, you could actually live. King Gambit's stat spread is... Mm. really really good it's slow but it's hp and attack are really high its defense is also pretty high special defense is by no mm. means bad uh. i'm running an assault vest on mine for a very specific reason now we've determined the thing about the other thing yeah so that's what i was going to say how long have we it's only been an hour and a half yeah we could go even further beyond. Okay, then. Guess I'll actually record doing the... It's not... A terror raid battle. Cause... Whoa! You look like the fella who done killed the other fella! You don't look like that fella who done killed the other fella. Okay, you have the... Yeah. We... Yeah, the uh, blonde air, okay, so I guess. It's time for the question of the day and my overall thoughts on the topic. So, anyway, if you like the gym leaders in Sword and Shield, but hate the gym leaders in Scarlet and Violet, why is that your opinion? I would love to see what the general consensus is on people that love the gym leaders from Sword and Shield, but hate the gym leaders in Scarlet and Violet. Which is a common opinion I noticed a lot of people have. So that got me interested in seeing if a lot of different people basically give a similar answer as to why they feel this way. Because that would show a lot of people share a common opinion for a very similar reason. One of the most common reasons that I've seen get thrown around a lot over the years is basically a lot of people feel like the gym leaders in Sword and Shield have actual personalities where a lot of people feel like the gym leaders in Scarlet and Violet do not really have personalities and I feel like in a lot of ways that's kind of harsh. However, I will agree that the gym leaders in Sword and Shield are amazing, mostly because you do interact with them enough where the game does actually paint a decent picture of their overall personalities. Whereas Scarlet and Violet, at least in the base game, 
does not really give you a lot of interactions with most of the gym leaders, meaning you can't really work out their overall personalities. But this is why I think Larry is super popular, because in the short amount of times you interact with Larry, it becomes very clear that Larry is more of an everyman doing this out of obligation and not necessarily because Larry wants to be here. And I think that's really funny, especially because Larry shows up as a member of the Elite Four and simply states he's here because he was told to be. Meaning Larry is super relatable and down to earth, which is nice. But in the DLC, you actually get a lot more interactions with the gym leaders in the game. And I think that helps flesh out a lot of their overall personalities and actually makes them far more interesting. But I do understand, especially at the time, why a lot of people would have looked at the game and said you don't really get a lot of interactions with these gym leaders, meaning it's hard to actually judge their overall personalities and see them as actual characters. Whereas Sword and Shield, as hated as the story can be, a lot of people acknowledge that your overall interactions with the gym leaders were incredibly well done. Anyway, you can leave your thoughts, opinions, and answers in the comments, or you can leave them on social media. All of my social media links, as well as my Discord links, are in the video description. Now, as always, I need to be a shill for a minute. If you subscribe to the channel, and if you follow me on social media, that really helps our communities grow. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I hope I will see you all next time. So, as always, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, everybody. I hope you come back someday. See you later.